And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with you. Corey L. Kramer back with us, has been connecting and speaking with animals since she was a little child. Just like humans, animals have distinct personality types, and Coriel has identified six animal dynamics which have redefined and transformed the art of animal communication. She's very passionate about showing people how to connect to their animals using her new method of dynamics to take their relationships to an even deeper, more profound level. Coriel Kramer back on Coast to Coast. Coriel, how have you been? I've been great. Happy New Year, George. It's so wonderful to be back on the show. You looking forward to a great 24? Yes, absolutely. I'm thinking we're all due for a really, really good year. Yeah, I think so, too. (laughs) Hey, tell everybody this child named Coriel. How did she get tied up with animals? The child named Coriel got tied up with animals because I've always had animals in my life. Um, From a really small age, I had things like uh, gerbils, salamanders, rabbits, cats, dogs. Hamsters? Hamsters. I had so many hamsters by the name of Pee Wee, uh, all of them named Pee Wee. Um, (laughs) They were just amazing. Uh And my mom was very, very... uh, very, very, you know, in touch with the intuitive abilities and very supportive and gave me a lot of opportunities to be around animals. We rented a lot of houses when I was a kid in upstate New York, where I grew up in New York City. We we would, summer times, we'd take our time up in upstate New York. And when I started to tell her things that I was learning from the animals when I was speaking to them when I was a kid, because I could hear them, I could feel what they were feeling, she didn't poo-poo it. She didn't say that it's something bad. She didn't. She was just loving and supporting and nurturing. So it just grew from there, and I never stopped doing it, really, and I was able to really connect deeply to it when I reconnected to my animal communication skills when I was in my 20s. Do you do it with the telepathy? I do. Animals are telepathic. I've talked about this before on the previous shows I've been on. The way that animals communicate with us is really through telepathy, but they also use things like body language and uh, also, you you know, barking and purring and sounds and and other things like that. But primarily they're telepathic, and we are too. Humans are telepathic, but we have such busy minds, we need to slow them down. If we can slow our minds down just a little bit through either, you know, meditation or just taking a quiet moment every day, just connecting to something higher than ourselves, we start to hear things that we would not normally hear with our busy, busy 2024 minds that we have going on now in the 21st century. How does energy healing tie into animals? Energy healing ties really, really well into animals because animals are primarily connected to what I call the stream of well-being. And what that is is that it's a stream, a river, an ocean of well-being and balance that flows from whatever you want to call it. I call it the universe. It can also be called divinity. But this well-being and balance is the way that we're supposed to be, and it's the way that we're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to be happy, healthy, thriving beings on this planet. And animals are really tapped into this. They're masters of it. And they're very receptive to energy work because they don't have the doubts and the stigmas and the skepticism and the worry and the concerns that humans do. They're much more pure in their thoughts. What does energy healing mean to you, Coriel? Energy healing is basically sending energy in different ways. So what first has to be understood is that it has been scientifically proven. This is nothing metaphysical. It's nothing woo-woo. It's nothing out there. It's been scientifically proven that every object, no matter if it's living or it's inanimate, is made up of molecules, and this molecules and these atoms are driven by energy. So what it is is that energy healing 
for me is one of two things. I describe it in two ways. Either moving energy within a being. So a person is sending energy within a being to that being or animal or human, or they're moving energy from one being to another. So what that means is is that one person is sending, another person is receiving, or one person is sending and an animal is receiving. Or it's simply just moving that energy within that being, whether that's yourself or another. You don't have to be sick to deal with energy healing, though, do you? No. Energy healing can help with a multiple, multiple way of, of things. It can help with emotional issues, mental issues, physical issues. It can help with spiritual issues. It can help people reconnect their pathways back to divinity. What about emotional issues? Emotional issues with animals, especially when they're dealing with things like abuse or trauma, humans as well. But animals have, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, more, let's say, um, more, of a, more of a background, you know, through being treated inappro- inappropriately. What happens is, is that they become disconnected from their stream of well-being, just like we do. But for them, because they thrive in this, this energy stream of balance, when they're disconnected, that's when problems can, can occur. Now, you've dealt with healing some animals. Give us some of the examples. Well, the way that I send healing is different. There's a lot of different modalities, but I do what I call a healing intensive. And the healing intensive is where I go very deeply. I connect very deeply to the animal, and I see five different levels, uh, the physical, the emotional, the spiritual or the soul level, the auric field, as well as the chakras, which are seven energy portals in the body. And what I do with that is, is that I clear all those out of any kind of energy that's stuck in there or energy that's just not flowing as it should, and it reconnects them back into their well-being. So some examples that I've had are animals who couldn't walk. Uh, there was a Great Dane. He was one of the first dogs or animals that I ever worked on with energy work, with the healing intensive that I do. And he couldn't walk uh, at all. That, and five minutes later, after I sent the healing, they sent me a picture of him running around in the backyard. I have a video of it, as a matter of fact, on my website. It's quite incredible. I've had a cat who couldn't, who was having problems staying upright. He was all, it was like he was drunk. And the vets couldn't figure out what was going on. They were afraid he had a brain tumor. So I did an energy work on him, and I did my healing intensive on him, and he was able to walk, and he's been fine ever since. He's still one of my clients, I've been, and that was about four years ago. Uh, so I've had cats, dogs, salamanders. I've even had like a leopard gecko that I send healing to. All animals are open and receptive to it because they don't have the doubt and the skepticism that some humans have to fight against in order to get into their balance and their well-being as well. Do people bring the animals to you, or do you just come across them? No, I don't really do. Primarily, the amount of work I do is either over Zoom. That's how I usually do all my sessions, whether I'm doing my animal dynamic personality work or I'm doing healing work um, or I'm doing any kind of work at all. It's usually over Zoom, and that is because people would want to be able to see me. But also, I mean, I can't travel. I have clients all over the world. I have clients in Japan, Dubai, all over Europe no, you, and all over the United travel. States. You'd be all so, over the map, literally. Yeah, so I, I would have frequent flyer miles that would be crazy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the reason that it's, it, the energy work is so powerful, it's just as powerful if I was with the animal in person 
as it is as when I send it long distance. Energy is energy. It doesn't matter if I'm in the same room with the animal or the person or I'm hundreds of miles away. It's just as potent as it would be, no matter what. What percent do you solve with animals or humans? Primarily, and this is my choice, Primarily, I work with animals. The reason being is, like I said before, they are extremely open and receptive to the healing that I do. So because of that, the results are much more powerful. They're much more potent. They're much more expansive. Like I said, animals who couldn't walk all of a sudden could walk after the healing. Animals who were having uh, mental issues or emotional issues, so they're scratching or attacking their owners, all of a sudden would stop doing these behaviors. So the percentage is much higher because I choose to work with animals. However, I can work with people. I have no problem with it but I just make sure that the person is ready to let go of any of the issues that they're having because, unfortunately, us humans, we have a tendency to want to hold on to our pain. We think it defines us and makes us stronger. And to a certain extent, in some cases it does, but in other cases it acts as almost a destroyer to our souls. That is truly remarkable. Coriel, your website is your name, right? Uh, yeah, it's very simple. You can find me on Facebook. So you can find my website under my name, which is com, and you can find me under Facebook, also under my name. How often are you communicating with an animal as opposed to trying to heal it? Well, that's a, that's a really good question, George. So what I do is, when I do my healing, when I do my work with animals, whether it's animal communication through talk therapy or whatever, I always start the first session and I work in weekly session packages because the healing and the work that I do with animals is so much more intense. I can't try to cram it into 60-minute sessions. It's not going to be as effective. So that's why I work in weekly session packages. And the first session I always dedicate to is a healing. I want to make sure that those five levels are healed as much as possible. Again, those five levels are empathically and intuitively. I scan and I start to heal the physical, the emotional, the chakras, the soul level to make sure there's no more karmic gunk, which means that they keep on you know, repeating different things over and over and over again. And then the auric field, which is about a foot outside of everybody's body, including animals. Once I do that, it gets us a really solid foundation to really do any other work that we do later on in my other sessions with my clients. So I always start the first session, no matter what, is always a healing intensive. How did you come up with its six animal dynamics? Well, actually, since our last episode, since our last show, I discovered uh, a seventh. Um, so now we have seven dynamic pet personalities. So I came up with them basically from really studying and looking back on the animals that I've talked to over the decades. I've been doing this almost in close to 25 years now. So I started looking at the animals that I was talking to, and I started to notice a pattern. And the pattern was in their personalities. That's usually how I tell people uh, what I'm getting when I start a session with them. When I start a session, I let them know what their personalities are, and I let them know those traits so that they know that I have their animal. That way they know that I've got the right animal, especially if there's multiple animals, animals in spirit, whatever. So I get the personality. And then I started to discover the pattern. I started to see this pattern of personalities. And when I started to delve more into it, I started to realize that every personality likes to be touched differently. They like to be interacted with. They like different toys than the other personality does. They, inter they see the world differently. They like to be talked to in a different tone of voice. They like different words to describe them. So it really does 
transform the way that a person can see their animal. And I've had amazing, amazing results that people can see when they go to my website. They can see the testimonials. Is there a breed of animal that's a little more receptive than another? No. I've, as I said before, I have sent healing and I have talked to a multiple, multiple amounts of different animals. I mean multiples. I've talked to, you know, whales. I've talked to dolphins. I've talked to dogs. I've talked to cats, birds, uh, lizards, uh, rept- uh, other reptiles. It's, it's horses, cats. It doesn't matter. It, there's, there's really no difference. It's, it's about their personality. All animals are, are uh, essentially the same. However, the, the personality is what makes them different. What do they think of human beings? Well, it depends on the human being. <laughs> what do they think of us generally? It, generally, animals really do love us. They, they think that we're amazing. They think that we can be so much more than we allow ourselves to be. But they want us to, to see them as fellow beings. There, there is no difference between one being and another being. It's energy talking to energy. It's one being talking to another being. And they love us but because they have that almost Christ-like consciousness, that unconditional, non-judgmental, non-critical love. They see us in a light. They see us how we should really see ourselves. I mean, they inspired me to really look at myself as a person of worth. And what happens is, is that, but of course, I mean, even I've had animals that I've talked to in shelters, even the ones who have been abused, they still don't put that person who abused them up against all of humanity. They, they do see the beauty in us, and they just want us to see the beauty in ourselves. Can you use the same kind of energy healing techniques on a human as you do an animal? Absolutely. There is no difference. Energy is energy. There's different modalities of energy. So think of something like acupuncture. Acupuncture works on what the Chinese called the qi or the life force energy inside of a being, whether that being is an animal or whether that being is human. There is no difference. Things like, you know, Reiki, Yoga, even, is a form of energy healing because you're moving the energy within your body. You're moving those, the, and you're activating those portals within your body when you do yoga. And things like yeah, reflexology, all these are different forms of energy healing. Coriel, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, I want you to give us a technique on how you use it on an animal, and then can other people do it as well? Is it easy to train other people? Oh, very easy. Very easy. People pick up on it pretty fast? Yeah. there's. We'll talk more about it, but it's, it's fascinating. It's right. very easy. We'll come back in a moment. Her website is all linked up at coasttocoastam.com. It's her name, corielkramer.com. And welcome back to Coast to Coast, George Norrie with Coriel Kramer. Coriel, so how would you train a person to deal with energy healing? Well, first off, what I tell people is that anybody can send healing. It's really about the intent when you send the healing. Can somebody send you bad healing or bad energy? Absolutely. Sure. We've all had people who have sent us or we've been around people with bad feeling energy. But it's about the intent. But you also have to understand what you give, you get back. So if you give good energy, you get back good energy. But if you give bad energy, you're going to get that back, and it's going to hit you and hit you It's hard. called karma, isn't it? That's absolutely right. So what you give, you get. So it's also, it's always important that you make sure that you have a good intention 
and that you're feeling good and you're feeling relaxed emotionally. You don't want to send energy to somebody or some being if you're not, if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling rushed, if you're feeling, you know, angry. You, you don't want to send that kind of energy because it's going to interfere with the healing that you're trying to invoke in that being that you're sending it to. So you want to make sure that you are in a, a nice, emotional, happy state when you send that energy. Calm, peaceful is what you're looking for. So I train people and I show people how to do it, but I make sure that they're in the right mindset when they do do it. There are some mental, <clears throat> excuse me, there are some modalities that require that you take a certification course and you get attuned and you they make you think that you can't send energy if you're not attuned to a certain level. That I have found not to be true. It is about the intent. Anybody can send energy to another person or another and or, or to another being, whether that being is animal, vegetable, or mineral, it doesn't matter. It's all about the intent. There are some things, there are some modalities that require that you learn all this knowledge about plants and anatomy and education on herbs. That is things like Chinese herbs or flower essences, which is about vibrational healing. But essentially, if you want to send energy to another being, you just send it. You don't have to be in this special attuned state. You don't have to be at a certain spiritual level. You just want to send energy, do it. And I tell people it's an easy way to feel your energy field is if you take your hands and you rub your hands together like palm to palm and fingers to fingers, so one hand facing the other, and you rub the hands vigorously for about a minute or two and then slowly pull your hands apart, you're going to feel your energy field. You're going to feel energy in between your hands because you've activated it. And it feels like it could feel pulsating. It could feel like taffy. It could feel like uh, a rubber ball. It doesn't matter. But when you do that, that's going to let you know how strong you, you are as an energy being. Because, again, like I said in the beginning, we're all energy beings. We're all essentially made from energy. It's scientifically proven. But it just depends on your mental state, your emotional state, and your intention when you're sending the energy. What's it like walking through a animal pound, I guess, where they keep animals before they euthanize them? Have you walked through those before? I used to do uh, rescue work in New York City, and one of the things I felt drawn to was uh, photography. So I would go into the kill shelters in New York City, and I would take pictures of the animals. And it was, ex you would think it would be extremely depressing and sad, but it wasn't. There were so many animals there who had been through so much pain that they found, in as weird as it sounds, they found this peace in these in the shelter they were away from the trauma they were away from the abuse they were away from the drama and they were finding this peace now some of them of course were euthanized so that was sad but primarily they just were happy to be in a place where they felt safe even if that place was a shelter um, energy work that I was doing there on top of the pho photography I was doing and putting it up on the Pence Binders website was something where, you know, I would just sit with an animal who came in who was terribly abused, and I would just send them energy for a second, for a moment. And you would see the, their face change. The, the faces would get, were so strained and so in pain from the mental abuse they had suffered or the physical abuse that when I sent them the energy, their face softened. They became more content. They, they became more peaceful. They just let go of the pain that they were holding inside them. We have all come across, as you mentioned, energy zappers that you oh, yeah. get close to and they kind of drain you. Sometimes they do it on purpose. Sometimes they don't even know they're doing it. That's right. That's right. Have you ever come across an animal that has that ability? 
No. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I didn't no. think so. Um, as, as weird as this sounds, you know, animals are primarily at their core. They're so tapped in to that, that, for want of a better way of saying it, that Christ-like consciousness of divine, loving, unconditionally. That, that's their natural state. It's our natural state as well, but we kind of lost our way a little bit. We're working on getting it back, and there's a lot more people who are trying to find it and working on on finding it and working on, you know, attuning themselves to it. But animals are in such a way that they, they don't want to send us bad energy. They, they really don't because they're, they're, they're love at their core, they're love. And when you love some, and when you love as strongly as animals do, they don't, they're, they're not into sending you bad energy or bad, you know, vibrations. Yeah, but what about an animal that is vicious? What kind of energy does that put off? It depends on the animal. It depends on the situation and what that animal has been through. They, they look. People lash out at each other, but it's not. It's not really about that person. Whenever there's an old saying that I like to use, whenever something's bothering you. It's really about you. When, when something disturbs you, no matter if it's a person or it's a situation, it really starts within you. So you have to start looking at yourself and you start to say, why is this bothering me? Why is this person bothering me like they are? Why are they triggering me like they are? Why are they pushing my buttons like they are? And you have to examine yourself. When an animal is vicious, it's usually... Aside from, of course, rabies, which is a disease that causes them their their brains to you yeah, know it turns into mush, improper, right? Right to 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 melt essentially, you know, and they're not in their right stream or their right frame of mind, you know. An animal who's vicious is lashing out because emotionally or mentally or physically they're in pain or they have been in pain. And so they see the whole world as a threat. But they're not, it doesn't come from hate. It doesn't come from, well, I hate you because you're this color or I hate you because you're this race or I hate you because you believe in this religion. It, that's what we humans have a tendency to do. The animals are just, I'm lashing out because I'm in pain and I need to, to, to lash out because I need to take that power back. From, I need to feel powerful because I've been disempowered. Since you've been doing this, Coriel, since you were a little girl, mm -hmm. was it hereditary? Well, I have a background of, I don't know a lot about my, my ancestry. I do know that I am part Native American. I'm also African American. I'm also French and I'm Italian. I know that my uh, family on my father's side, my grandmother was very intuitive. I know that she was part Navajo. Um, and my grandfather on my father's side was part Seminole Indian. So I know that they, and I've heard stories. Now, of course, when you hear stories, you have to take them with a grain of salt because it's not written in stone. There's no proof. But I have been told that my grandmother and my grandfather both were very intuitive, both very powerful healers. And I also found out from my um, mother's side that the French side of her also were, were healers. They were herbalists. Pretty, pretty uh, dramatic for the family, wasn't it? I think that I come from, I believe, I mean, I, I, I feel it in my heart that I come from a lineage of people who were very tapped in. That doesn't mean that that essentially means that I'm better than anybody else doing energy work. It just means that that's my story, and that makes me who I think to a certain extent it makes me who I am. But I think it is powerful. I think I come from a lineage of people who have been who, – who 
have been healers who were called to for higher power work on this planet. You know, and I think it's something I I feel anyway. I feel like when I do healing work on on animals and when I do healing work on people, I'm kind of honoring them in a way and honoring that lineage that I've been told that I have. Have you ever used this technique on yourself? Oh, all the time. <laughs> you must be the healthiest woman on the world. <laughs> I, 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 I try. I don't get sick a lot. I, I really don't. Uh, when I do get sick, it's usually an indication to me that my energetic, for want of a better way of saying it, my battery is depleted. I've either been doing a lot of intense work in my work with animals, uh, too much and not too much giving and not enough receiving, so to speak. So I try to keep myself as much in tune as I possibly can. So how do you do that? And it's nothing special that it's just for me and nobody else. What I do is, is that I try on a daily basis to connect to what I call the universe. You can call it divine. You can call it spirit. You can call it hairy. I don't care whatever you, your belief is. It doesn't matter. It's all powerful for you. But I try to keep myself as energetically in tune as I possibly can by connecting to something higher than myself, by connecting through the nature, taking walks, well, when, it's, when the weather permits, so to speak, when it's not like six feet of snow outside. But getting no. in nature is a great way for you to feel in tune and in balance. And so what I try to do is I try to keep myself as as energetically on a high high vibration as I possibly can through spiritual work, through being with friends, through being with like-minded people, through doing a show like this. I mean, this is all really, this is all raising up our vibrations. When we listen to something that feels good to us, whether it's music or, you know, coast-to-coast radio show that we like, it raises our vibration. It makes us feel good. And when we feel good, we're more in balance with well-being and, and uh, the way we're true and health. Have you ever had an animal say to you, get me out of this situation? It, it, yes, and but not with clients. <laughs> Usually they, I've never had it happen with my clients. Uh, I've always had it happen a lot of the times it's happened with animals when I was doing a lot of rescue work uh, and when I was working in the, the uh, CACC and doing the photography for pet finders, I would have a lot of animals that would say, please help me, please help me get me out of here. And that made me feel bad because, I mean, I, there's hundreds of animals in there. I can't take them all home with me. So what do you do? How do you take your power back in a power in a situation where you feel powerless? So I would send, I would talk to them, and I would tell them, look, I, I, it's not in my power to be able to take you out of this situation, but I can send you a good feeling energy. I can send you love. I can send you compassion. And they appreciate that. That helps them to get out of their situation in their mind in even a small amount of time. That's, that's, that's priceless to them. Does Anna, every animal have the ability to communicate? Yes. Every animal has the ability to communicate. However, not every animal wants to communicate. They, they want to be able to, it depends on what the, who the animal is. Just like a person, not every single person wants to talk to me. Not every single person wants to talk to you. There are some people that just are just like, no, I don't, I am not jiving with Coriel today. I don't feel her. I don't like her. I don't know her. But it's, it's, it depends on what the situation is. And that's why it's important when I talk to an animal, and even when I'm doing my energy work, before I send my energy to an animal, I always ask consent. I ask them. I, tell, I introduce myself to them. I tell them who I am, why I'm communicating with them, why I'm connecting to them, and ask permission to connect to them in a strong way so that I can do the work that I'm called to do with them if that's what they want. But if they tell me, no, I don't want to talk to you, 
that's it. I don't push. It's, it's up to them because animals are so assumed upon. We just assume upon them on a daily basis. I just assume my horse wants me to ride him. I just assume my cow wants me to milk them. I just assume this. I assume that. When you ask consent, it gives them power to say no if they want to. But what what animal would say don't. no? I don't think they would, would they? No. Not, no, not really. I mean, the animals really want to talk to us. They want to feel better. Again, as I said before, they're, they're, they're in line with feeling good. That's what they, they strive for every single moment of every single day. They want to feel good. It's really inspiring it, because that's the way we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to feel bad every single day. They want to feel good. They're masters at it. And, you know, because of that, there are a lot of, I've had maybe in the 25 years I've been doing this, I think I've had two animals that told me I am not wanting to talk to That's you. not bad. Coriel, we're going to take a short break and come back and take phone calls with you next. 